Well, good afternoon and welcome to Trial Talk Live. My name is Nancy McDonald. I'm going to be the moderator today. Judith Cox is our um, the buddy for us today, and she will be uh, looking at your questions. You can put them into chat, and the questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. So Leanne uh, Smith is our, our uh, presenter today, and she actually um, reminds us that we as gardeners spend a lot of time both crouching and looking down when working in our gardens. Leanne's presentation will give us practical tips on looking up, adding the vertical dimension as a wonderful and effective element in our gardens. So over to you, Leanne. Thank you so much, Nancy. Yes, we're going to talk today about the other dimension in the garden. And what I'm hoping to do is to inspire you to take advantage of this vertical area in your garden space. So I'm going to do cover three topics in terms of gardening on the vertical. What is it? Why would we do it? And I'm going to give you some ideas and tips on designing on the vertical, both to solve problems and to add artistic interest in your garden. We're gonna start with what is gardening on the vertical? And there are really two main aspects to this approach. The first thing is, of course, we are talking about growing upwards versus outwards. And that really means usually using vertical supports for plants. So I'm showing you just a few examples here about what that looks like. The one on the left, you may have heard this kind of installation referred to as a green wall or a living wall or a plant wall, but it is something that you can do actually inside your home. The example in the middle just shows some stacking planters. This is something that provides that small footprint, but the large uh, garden area and it's something that'd be really great for balconies or small patios. The third example on the right shows a vertical support for planter boxes using wood, and there's actually a wire screening in, in behind the boxes. There are so many options, and we are going to be looking at some more of them. Now you can grow vertically in the ground or in containers with edibles, with ornamentals, with herbs, you can grow vertically inside or outside using soil or hydroponically. There are lots and lots of options for you. Here are just two examples. Uh, on the left, a miniature rose inside in a container using a small supporting wooden trellis. And on the right hand side, you see my um, um, square foot vegetable garden where that particular year I was growing peas on a wire mesh trellis. Uh, you could also grow ornamentals in such an installation, uh, annual flowering vines like cardinal flower or sweet peas or thunbergia, um, all of that to expand this small garden space. Now I could actually spend the entire presentation here showing you very inspiring pictures of options and approaches to vertical gardening. Uh, you're really only limited by your imagination and by what your space requires. Um, I've seen an old skid or one of those wooden pallets mounted on a wall with pots hanging from it. I've seen old rain gutters attached to the side of a building filled with soil with herbs growing in it. Uh, I've seen hanging planters at different heights hung from a crossbeam. I've even seen a fabric shoe organizer, you know, the ones that have the little pockets and you put your shoes on and hang over a door, changed into a living wall. The pockets lined with plastic bags, pots inserted, and hung up on a wall, presto, instant living wall. Most of these projects are actually do it yourself and can be done quite inexpensively as long as you're a little bit handy. So if you look at the picture on the lower left of the two little boxes here, this could even be done out of scrap lumber, just two or more of these little boxes with containers attached to the wall, beautiful and easy and not very expensive. Um, you can uh, search the internet 
to find your inspiration and then head out to your local garden center or your hardware store to find the materials that you need. There are also things that you can buy that are all readily made or just require a little bit of assembly. Um, there are, of course, some practical considerations when you're going to hang things from structures. You want to make sure that your support is strong enough because, of course, you put a plant and or many plants and containers and soil and water, things can get very heavy. So, for example, you want to make sure that if you're installing a trellis, you've got those posts sunk into the ground, ideally below the frost line. So this structure doesn't get blown over in a strong wind. You want to protect your walls properly. So, for example, that fabric shoe organizer I was talking about, you'd probably want to put a sheet of plastic against the drywall and then mount such a thing up against that, and just in case there's any moisture seepage that could damage the wall. And of course, you would want to hang from studs and not from the drywall itself. The second aspect to gardening on the vertical is introducing vertical elements in your garden design. So um, those could be structural or plant material or a combination of the two. Structures, of course, are walls, terraces, arbors, obelisks, fences. Um, they can feature on their own if they are decorative or they can be used to support upward growing plants. So on the left here, I'm showing you an example of a decorative trellis that sometimes stands on its own in my backyard, but is most often used to support this um, beautiful Clematis jackmanii. Um, and this, of course, is an example of a vine, which is a plant that grows upwards, grows vertically. Over on the right are examples of two other plants that provide vertical interest, vertical element the um, emerald cedar in the background and the grass in the front. There are many benefits to gardening on the vertical. The two key ones that I wanna to cover today are how to solve problems using this approach and how to add artistic elements to your garden design. This is the thing we think about First off, when we think about um, gardening on the vertical, expanding the garden area. So if your problem is that you've run out of room to grow out, you can always grow up. You can add a rectangular planter to your patio or your balcony, uh, put an obelisk in and grow, say, a different annual vine every year for interest. You can attach a trellis to a wall or a fence, try a climbing rose, try some peas. Try some herbs in pots. In the photo here, I'm showing again from my square foot garden, the year that I ran out of room and couldn't grow any bush beans. So I'm growing here a pole bean. This one is um, Kentucky Wonder Yellow. Um, but there's another one, of course, the um, Scarlet Runner, which has got not only the fruit, but also the um, beautiful orange flowers. So a combination of an ornamental and, a, um, uh, and an edible. Um, the whole idea is to expand the garden area. But designing on the vertical can solve other problems too. Say you want to disguise an unattractive view. This is a picture of one of the sides of my house. When we bought the house, it was just this really long, like 58 feet, 18 meters of this rather bland colored horizontal siding. And because it's horizontal, that further emphasized this long flat expanse. Well, installing a simple white trellis did a number of things right away. It broke up that long wall, added a structural feature, and it also anchors this curvy edged garden that I installed along the wall. Plus, growing a flowering vine on the trellis adds even more interest. This is Lonicera, the honeysuckle gold flame. 
Uh, sadly, it's not in flower here in this picture, but it's got these beautiful orange and yellow flowers on it that are very fragrant as well. So even more interest is, uh, is provided along the house. And we're contrasting that horizontal with a vertical element. Now, conversely, you might want to highlight something in the garden. So here's an example of a very simple planting of calendula and shasta daisy against a tall, dark fence. The fence at this place, at this point, is about five feet high, and this is a rather low planting that you might just actually walk right by in the garden. But adding this painted trellis not only adds an additional interest point, but it emphasizes this little grouping. It's kind of like a signpost to something interesting in the garden. Now this pergola, which is a larger vertical structure, it actually solves two problems and adds an artistic element all at once. So in this case, I wanted to do more than just disguise a view. I wanted to hide the neighbor's messy garden backyard. And um, this also provides privacy using an option to just extending this fence by another 12 feet. Um, and it creates a garden room because you step down two steps to get into it from the, um, from the deck. Of course, the room itself gets even cozier and more private when you grow a, uh, a, a vining plant over the pergola. This is the Virginia creeper, which of course gives this gorgeous color in the fall and invites you to use this garden room even longer than you might. Um, but I've also grown hops successfully on pergola. Um, Humulus lupulus, which of course you should grow anyway because it's so much fun to say, right? Humulus lupulus. Um, but to me, the best benefit of gardening on the vertical is adding art to the garden. Um, several years ago, I was inspired by a sculptor um, installation at a winery in Prince Edward County, Huff Winery. Now, I'm not a sculptor, but I can paint. So who says obelisks have to be black? You know, when you go to the garden center, you find obelisks, they're usually in a uh, black wrought iron or a very basic wood structure. Well, here's an example of where I took a really interesting looking um, uh, obelisk but painted it this really vivid sky blue, which is a statement color in this part of the garden, a contrast color, and it looks like a sculpture. And it's totally fine on its own as a statement piece. It really needs no planting um, added to it. Here, the obelisk, the painted obelisk provides repetition of the, the feature color that is in this part of the bed, which is obviously red. So here you see uh, Lobelia cardinalis, which is just unfortunately at the end of its flowering time at the time of this picture. And behind the red obelisk is a hemrocallis, uh, which is called outrageous, and it is a deep orange red color. So here, using this vertical structure, the red color is emphasized and is highlighted in the garden. And it also supports a vertical planting, which is the Clematis henrii, which has those big, gorgeous, white, pure white flowers. Now, creating artful vertical structures in the garden is actually quite easy. All you need is a painting booth and you're good to go. So just to wrap up, uh, gardening on the vertical, we're talking about growing up, not out, using structures or plant material or a combination of both. There are many benefits, both practical and artistic, and it truly does add an extra dimension uh, and a lot more interest to your garden. It gets us all looking up. That's really interesting, Leanne. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, we have a question here from uh, Iris. She's asking, is Virginia creeper okay up an eight foot cedar 
hedge. That would be vertical, but do you think that would be okay or would it be better off on a structure? My uh, experience is that it's much better on a structure. I think that mm. um, it, it might cause some damage to the hedge uh, by shading it, especially the cedar, which really likes a lot more sun than it would get. Um, and it's a very aggressive grower. So um, yeah, I think personally, I would advise keeping a Virginia creeper to, to a structure. I was wondering, is there any kind of or specific soil that you would use in the pots that are going up? Does it need to be lighter? What would, what would you add to the soil on a vertical planting? I think I would just start with a good general potting soil because primarily it is a container application and a, a container type of um, installation. Um, and from there, I would treat the planting the same way as I would if I had a container uh, sitting on the ground somewhere. Mm. So you're not worried about the weight of, of the soil? Well, the soil, you know, a good a good potting soil is not heavy. I think you want That's to, true. like you would with any um, container, uh, containerized plant, you'd want to ensure there's some vermiculite in there to keep things loose and keep uh, drainage happening and keeping the mix uh, light. So not going out and taking a shovel of garden soil um, to introduce yeah. into your pot. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you're you're going between perennial and annual climbers on your structures. Do mm -hmm. you do anything to protect your structures for the winter? Do some come down? Do you paint them? Do you cover them? So sometimes I uh, take them in if I'm going to paint them, but you know the whole painting booth thing is quite an adventure. So it's not something I do every year. <laughs> Um, yes. and in the meantime, I like to leave the painted obelisk structures out in the garden because they're fabulous uh, winter interest. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so oh. you don't you don't wrap them or anything? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. They're they're fine. The only thing that happens is over time the paint will start to fade. But that is over, I would say I get about four or five years before I'm looking at my um, my painted structures and thinking, hmm, they're not quite as vivid as I would like them to be. And at that point, uh, it's time to, to give them another coat. But it's not anything that has to be done every year. Definitely not. Well, what kind of paint do you use, actually, in your room? I... Uh, in the uh, to paint these structures, I use trim class. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm painting in all three of those cases that I showed you. They were all um, wrought iron um, structures. And so this is a perfect paint to adhere to that. And it's, I use the high gloss, which just adds a little more of a sparkle, yeah. I think. Um, and I find it's really quite durable. As Iris was uh, wondering if you use uh, a spray paint. Yes. But I, I've seen Tremcrad comes in a paint that you can paint on as well. Yeah, I think um, as messy as the uh, painting booth is, and I am known as the messiest painter in the world. So even though I'm all in the garb and everything, <laughs> I end up with paint up my arms. I don't know how that happens. It's in my hair. I don't know how, how that happens. Um, I, I still think that the the spray paint does give a better coverage. It's, it, they're very finicky yeah. and intricate. So I'm not sure brushing on would would be better. Although as the messiest painter in the world, I might try that. Well, that, why not? I yeah. say so. How yeah. about, uh, have you ever considered uh, using more than one color or do you think that that would interfere with the plant choices? Like if you did something that did an obelisk, but it had like stripes of color instead of one solid color, what do you think of that? I, I think you'd have to really think about where you were placing that in the garden. It yeah. could certainly be a great standalone piece that, uh, you know, really is a feature. 
Um, but you, I think you'd have to think carefully about what it might be competing with. Um, it's fine, I think, to do one contrasting color like I did with that bright uh, sky blue among my sort of warm colors in that part of the garden. But to add a number of different bright colors, I'm not sure that that would work in all situations. I think you, you, it could, but not for all situations. Um, and what do you think about uh, vining vegetables other than beans and peas, things like cucumbers or pumpkins or squash? Yeah, I think absolutely. that's a possibility. Absolutely. Yeah, it's something that uh, uh, cucumbers for sure. Pumpkins I've not actually tried personally, but maybe some of the other uh, people on the chat here might uh, have some experience with those. Um, but yes, absolutely. Anything that's vining, anything that will grasp on uh, you can use, but you can also, again, use a vertical structure, even that wire one in the veggie garden that I have to highlight a vertical plant. So think mm. things like gladiolas or sunflowers. Um, ah. If they're standing up against something, it does add to their visual appeal and their, um, you, you just notice them more. It's, it's a mm -hmm. way to them, I think. I yeah. believe I've seen uh, the pumpkins, um, bigger pumpkins, they have a sling or something attached to the structure mm -hmm. to support the weight. Okay. But, uh, I love the idea of the cucumbers hanging down. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, like I say, I think you're just limited only by your imagination as far as this mm -hmm. goes. And it does really open up um, this other dimension that you might not have uh, tried in your garden before. Would you say that the verticals should be uh, more towards the back of your garden or could you put them central or forward? Oh, absolutely. I think you could put them central or forward um, uh, without any problem, especially when we're talking about the kind of obelisks like I have used, um, mm -hmm. because they're not very bulky. And so they, um, they can be front and center, so to speak, uh, and I think very effectively. It just depends on what shape your garden is, like is it, is it you know, maybe you've got a, uh, an egg-shaped um, island bed, uh, and, and maybe you want to put uh, a big uh, tall obelisk on that on that thinner edge on the narrower edge just to delineate oh, yeah. where that uh, garden ends and to add some more visual interest to that thinner area where you might be limited to the um, spread of plants that you can physically fit on the ground you know what I'm you know what I'm saying mm. yeah, I'm not sure I'm clear okay <laughs> Um, also, uh, there's a question about when do you do you prune that uh, Jackmanii clematis? Oh, um, because it flowers on new wood, it's the kind that you can take down at the end of the season. So I usually take it down to about eight inches or so, and it just loves that. And the next year, it's as tall and as big as you saw in the picture. Yeah. They're amazing plants. I know, they're like so fabulous. They're so fabulous. I know, yeah. I know. The Henry Eye, the other one with the white flowers, that's different. That it flowers on old and new wood. And so you just kind of leave that alone uh, over the winter. And then in the spring, just take out some of the dead or the dead um, branches. And uh, uh, you don't prune it back hard because then you will lose the uh, beginning, the early flowers that would, were set the year before. Um. Uh, Iris is asking something about a suggestion for three pieces of wood of different heights. Uh, she wanted to make faces of uh, a man, woman, and a child in them. Like, uh, Iris, are you asking where you could actually go to purchase something like that? You could just answer in chat, Iris. Iris, you can always send a message to the um, Master Gardener email helpline uh, and, uh, you know, to flesh it out. Oh, here she says, 
She has three pieces on the ground already, three feet, two, three and a half feet, two and a half feet and a foot. How would she arrange those, Leanne? I would say um, it's a matter of arranging, stepping back, assessing, and adjusting. You know, I, I yeah. don't think there's a, a, a right uh, answer and only only do it this way. You could put the three beside each other. You could make a small circle. You could do two and then the little one in the front. Uh, depends on the vantage point that you're going to be looking at them from and, uh, you know, what what appeals to you. I think that's really the, the main measure. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Leanne. Uh, that was very interesting. I loved uh, uh, the picture you had of your, your red painted um, uh, obelisk mm -hmm. and uh, the color echo that you were getting with your, um, with your plants there. Very, very nice. So I'm hoping everyone will, uh, we only have two more trial talk live and next week uh, the topic is turn uh, kitchen scraps into plant food with Candace Dressler. So maybe you'd like, like to learn a little bit more about worm composting. So make sure you join us then. Thank you for joining us today. Goodbye.